You are sure that you are the one God is visiting this month. Jam your hands together for Jesus. And please, let's be comfortably seated. I want to appreciate the Lord, and I want to also appreciate God's servant in the house uh, for the privilege to bring the word unto us this morning. And my prayer is that God's agenda for us this month shall be fully realized in the name of Jesus Christ. Our prophetic focus for the month is God still works wonders through praise. And the anchor scripture for the month is taken from the book of Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. And the scripture says, let the people praise thee. O God, let the people praise thee. He said, then shall the earth yield our increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Verse 7, God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Via our praise, God does fearful things that make the world to fear him. From the scripture we just read, it is clear there that praise has the capacity to enforce drastic change in any situation. Even if the earth, according to scripture, is not willing to yield an increase, when praise is applied, the earth will be compelled to yield an increase. It says, let the people praise thee, then God shall bless us. The word let means allow. In other words, when the people allow themselves to praise God in whatever situation they find themselves, then they see the miraculous hand of God. It is my prayer that in this month, the kind of wonders you have never seen before, you will see it this month. I said the kind of testimonies you have never shared before in your life, this is the month you will share them. Let your amen be better than that. We have observed that thanksgiving and praise is one of the most neglected weapons of war. To many in church, it's just one of those things that we do. To many, praise is just an entertainment in church. But praise is more than that. Praise is not entertainment. It's a, it's, it's a weapon of war. It is by it that we win the battles of our lives. Praise and thanksgiving are one of the most powerful of all spiritual weapons at our disposal. And praise among others, when we engage with it, secures for us divine presence. Psalm 22 and verse 3. He said, but thou, O art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Psalm 100 and verse 4, he said, enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. You cannot carry the presence of God with you always, and situations will be against you. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Praise and thanksgiving among others provokes divine intervention. Many, many notable miracles in scriptures were wrought by the force of praise. Not a, I mean, an example is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22 to 24. When the enemy, three strong nations, came against a tiny nation of Judah, it was a battle that was determined before it started. How can three FT men come against a small person and that small person hopes to win that challenge? But because the people of God knows what, they knew what to do, they knew that if they engage praise, God must step in for them. They did that and their enemies were humiliated before them. Whatever it, wherever there is a gang up against you, I stand in the shoes of God's servant and under the unction of liberation. Those who gang up against you, they will blame themselves. 
The Bible said, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22 to 24, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Mm. They were smitten. God will bring confusion into the camp of your adversaries. And by the time God was done with the enemy, all the children of God needed just to do was to sweep in or to sweep in and then to gather the spoil of the battle. They didn't need her to shoot any arrow. But at the end of the day, they were the ones that carried the trophy. Hey, I pray for you this morning that no matter what you are going up against, God will give you the upper hand in the name of Jesus. Praise also engenders divine health. You can't be praiseful and be not nursing sickness at the same time. You cannot be praiseful and be lying on the sick bed. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. There was this testimony I, I, I stumbled upon yesterday of somebody, a gospel musician, who was diagnosed with cancer. And they told him that it was not going to last. And as time progresses, what the doctor, as it were, a prophecy they proclaimed into his life started coming to pass. And after several rounds of chemotherapy and all of that, the man had dropped drastically in weight and he got to a point that he couldn't take it anymore. And this man began to research what best way one can end this or a life. It has gotten to that point that he felt that death is the solution to the problem. It was at that point that the wife, thank God for godly wives, it was at that point that the wife started encouraging him. Why don't you praise God? And then one night like that, they began to praise the Lord. And the moment they began to praise God, the presence of God came into the hospital room. And from that moment, his strength that was, was gone before started coming back. And before you know what was happening, he overcame the challenge. Today, he's still singing for God. You cannot be praiseful and be on the sick bed. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. This month, sickness will not be traced to your address. All through the remaining days of your life, you will be sharing testimonies of sickness-free life. Press also engenders access to fresh oil. In Psalm 92, verse 1 to 2, and then verse 10 to 12, the Bible said, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. And what will be the result? Verse 10 But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Via thanksgiving, you can secure fresh oil on your life. And what's the effect of this fresh oil? Verse 11 and 12, he said, My eye also shall see my desire of my enemies, and my ear shall hear my desire of the wicked that lies up against me. In verse 12, he said, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Praise God. So, when you continue to praise God, the anointing on your life will continue to increase. And the anointing we are talking about is not just for the church alone. No, it's for every aspect of our lives. Mm. You know, the Bible tells us about the, the people like Bezalel who were anointed specially to be craftsmen. So, your, and the anointing we are not talking about is not just to heal the sick. 
is for you to do exploit also in your various field of endeavor. And I pray that by the hand of God, there will be a difference in your engagement this month. Praise also facilitate access to revelation. And like it's been said, revelation is what brings about a revolution in a life. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 to 30. He said, Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. And verse 30. And the Lord shall cause his might me, his glorious voice to be heard. With your praise, your antenna, spiritual antenna, is much more active to receive the breaking news from heaven. You are never confused in any matter if you are a praiseful person. Only those who mum and complain, they are the ones who are confused about the issues of their lives. But for those who are praiseful, what to do part time is available to them by the Spirit of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3, he said, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. So if you want to draw me, revelation, you want to assess lemma per second, per second, then maintain an atmosphere of joy and rejoicing in your life. Don't let whatever is happening around you touch you. Develop an Im Im immunity against whatever is happening. Then you will never be stranded in life. Praise also empowers our access to divine guidance. In Psalm 100 and verse 4, the Bible tells us that thanksgiving and praise, they are the divine protocol for us to assess the presence of God. And when we assess the presence of God, according to Psalm 16 and verse 11, we are able to assess the path of life. He said, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. This month, you will experience only pleasures. Your amen can be better than that. Instead of pleasure, you will enjoy only pleasures. Praise also empowers our access to realms of signs and wonders. It empowers our access to realms of signs and wonders. You never stop sharing testimonies of God's acts in your life via praise. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. You know, one thing I discovered about creation is that everything that is living actually responds to praise. Everything, everything living. They respond to praise. It may seem as if they don't have the sense, but the way God created everything, it is such that they respond to positive affirmations. And God is telling us here, if what I created, I created them to respond positively to praise, what about me? When you praise me, you affirm me, you praise me, then I do fearful things for you in your places. I do wonders without number. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, verse 12, and verse 13, the Bible said, And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into the temple and cast out all that sold and brought in, I mean, and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold those. And in verse 13, the Bible said, 
Okay, verse 13 said, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. You, but you have made it then of thieves. Verse 14 now, he said, After that, the blind, the lame came into the temple and he healed them. That happened in response unto their praise. Please hear this. You see, the way you respond to God is the same way he will respond to you. If you want to see his wonders, please be, be praiseful. Praise him anyhow. Praise him every time. Praise him in every situation. They praised him and he went into the temple. And like the scripture tells us, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, as you praise him today, whatever may be buying and selling in your body, they shall pack and go today in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise also facilitates fulfillment of prophecies. As we have it in scriptures, in the case of Abraham, the promise was taking long to be fulfilled, but Abraham did not back down. He kept his faith alive and he proved it to the devil and to God that, he, that, mean, that his faith was intact by giving glory unto God. And via his praise, the promise was fulfilled. Please understand this, that for every one of us to be praiseful is for us to be fruitful. The more praiseful you are, the more fruitful your life becomes. In Psalm 92, verse 1 to 2, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing his praises. And then in verse 13 to 14, he said, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourish. You see, praise is a spiritual fertilizer to your life. It causes you to blossom even when the situations are not right. That's why that scripture said, let the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the heart yield thy increase. Without any doubt, without controversy this month, your life, your business, your career shall thrive more than it has been thriving before in the name of Jesus Christ. Very specifically this morning, we are going to be looking at an aspect of the capacity of praise. And we are looking at praise is a mountain moving force. Praise is a mountain moving force. Is there any mountain in your life that is a source of concern for you? I'd like you to understand that whatever can move God can move any mountain. Psalm 47 verse 5 to 6. He said God has gone up with a shout. And the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Verse 6. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. If praise can move God, then praise can move your mountains. It doesn't matter what the mountain is called. That they may call it an everlasting mountain. God is more everlasting than, than any mountain. And if praise can move the everlasting God, it can move any everlasting mountain. Any stubborn case today, they shall be dealt with with a note of finality. Can, can, let your amen be better than that. I'd like you to understand that the mountain before man, they are but level ground before God. What you call a mountain is a plain before God. So when you know how to engage God, God knows how to level the mountain that is face to face with you. What we call mountains simply are, I mean, they are, they are entrances that prevent us from going, I mean, to, from prevent us from going forward. That's what a mountain can be. And that was what the Red Sea was to the children of Israel. The armies of Egypt were coming behind them and Red Sea was in front of them. And so the people began to panic 
because they felt that there was no way forward again. The Red Sea stood in front of them like a mountain. So if there is anything that is trying to stop your progress, the same God who parted the Red Sea is ready today to remove that mountain from your presence. A mountain also can be an obstacle that is preventing you from reaching your goal. I don't know what goals you have set for yourself for the year, but it seems as if they are not being realized. In fact, what to be blamed for you may be even be the economy of the nation. But hear me and hear me clearly. It doesn't matter how it is in this nation. We belong to a different country, I mean, a different kingdom with a different economy. You only need how to know how to assess that economy and then whatever you have planned will begin to fall into place. A mountain is an obstruction that is not allowing one to possess his or her own possession. Anything that may be standing between you and your desires, anything that may be standing between you and your miracle, anything that is determined, that wants to deny you access to your inheritance, or even to the, for the fulfillment of your destiny is a mountain. And according to scripture, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7, he said, Who art thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? He said, Thou shalt become a place. So be to be today, as you praise God, that mountain shall be turned into a place. Amen. I said, That mountain shall be turned into a place. Jericho was a mountain standing between the children of Israel and their access into the promised land. But the scripture told us that when they shouted at the sound of the trumpet, the wall, that mighty wall sank and they assessed their inheritance. This month, you will assess what God has ordained for you. Every package that has your name tag on it, you will possess them this month in the name of Jesus Christ. So in general, when we talk about a mountain, what we are talking about is problem. A big problem. That's what we talk, well, that's what we talk about. But one thing you must also realize about mountain is that a mountain before you is also a setup for a big testimony. How big your mountain is will determine how big your testimony will be. How stubborn the mountain will be will determine how notable your miracle will be. But the one thing that you must know is that you must know how to handle every mountain before you. God's servant have said there is no mountain anywhere. It's everyone's mountain is their ignorance. When you don't know how to as undo the mountain before you, that's when it becomes an obstacle. Everyone who truly knows God, they have this mindset that the mountain is not the real issue. It is their attitude towards the mountain that is the real issue. When you possess a right attitude to a mountain, the mountain will bow. But when you possess a wrong attitude towards the mountain, it will stand strong. The people of Israel were about to enter into the, into me, into the promised land. And 12 spies were sent. Numbers chapter 13, verse 26 to 33. And when they entered, they came back with their report. Ten out of the twelve brought back a negative report. Let's read it together. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of Israel. And I mean, unto Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Verse 27. And they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. If they had stopped there, it would have been good. But said, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. 
And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the, the Amalek dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittite and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Is that not that one, not a contradiction? You say you saw giants there. And the same land is eating up the people. If truly the land is eating up the people, you shouldn't find anybody there. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. The same land that is eating people. And verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giant. And we are in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. Their attitude wrong. And so, with, according to the report that they gave with their mouth, they didn't enter the land. It is not the mountain that is the issue. Your attitude towards the mountain is the issue. I was in a Wobi class sometime and I was I, one of the, I, don't, I can't remember the subject again, but there is one of the topics in the Wobi class that has to do with problem solving. And I ask a question, who likes problem here? Nobody raised their hand. I ask again, who likes problem here? Nobody raised their hand. And then I said to them, if you don't like problem, then you don't like promotion. All of us have gone to school before. And you have written an exam. And some are still writing. You see, that exam is a problem. If you don't write the exam, say, because you don't like the, you don't like the exam, then you will not go to the next class. Attitude towards the mountain is what will determine whether you overcome it or it overcomes you. But I stand under the unction of vibration today. Whatever I want to bring you down, you will climb over it to your next level. In the name of Jesus Christ. The moment you allow God to take over through your praise, you will discover that the, what you are calling a mountain is actually a feather. Mm. The Bible said in Psalm 114, verse 1 down to 7, when Israel went out of Egypt, out of a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary. Israel is dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like lambs. The little hills like lambs. Every mountain threatening you, they will begin to speak, skip after this service in the name of Jesus. So when, when the, we engage places, we engage God. And when God manifests, every mountain, every obstacle, they disappear. Please understand that God is still working wonders through praise. And in your life today, it will work that wonder. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please understand that from scriptures, the enemy is ever resisting our access to our redemptive rights. Every time God has a good intention towards his people, and it is declared. The devil also goes to work to make sure that those intentions don't, don't come to pass. So, and there is this saying also that the reason for the opposition you are facing is because of your position. Every time you are about to assess your inheritance and there, are, there is a resistance Know that it is because what you want to assess 
is real and is good. That's why the devil is fighting. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9, for a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries. There are many. If you want good things, please be ready. You sign up also for advice to deal with adversaries. When you are praying for breakthrough, also be praying for God to give you the capacity to deal with adversaries. Because they come together. They come together. But the thing is, you don't sit down and watch Hoping that one day, one day, they will leave you alone. No. No. They will not. What you must find out is how do I put them in their place? How do I operate as if the devil has resigned? How do I operate as if the devil is no longer in existence? That's all you need to find out. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 24, he said, Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Hanon. Behold, I have given unto thy hand Sion the Amorite, king of Eshbon, and his land, begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. And one way we contend as believers is through our high praise unto God. Every time we'll engage, I press unto God. The way is cleared for us. It is cleared for us. And when we talk about I praise, I praise is not um, it's not a gentle kind of praise. I praise is talking about violent praise. Just like the testimony of a woman who was believing God for the fruit of the womb, and when they were giving instruction to praise God, she began to praise God anyhow. And then the next person to her said, Now, soldier, you be. Because the way she was just marching the ground, anyhow, God must hear me. Hear me. When you want to praise God, you engage in high praise. Your dance step does not need to align with the beats. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it comes to that, offbeat is allowed. Dance like any me. Dance like somebody that is not hearing. You are not doing it to please anybody. You are doing it to get the attention of your God. It is not time for you to compose yourself. Dance like David, who lost his jacket in order to please his God. Who kill me? Whoever looks at you to mock you, that's his own problem. All you are after is that today, today, something must change in my life. So it is a violent kind of praise. And it involves singing aloud, it involves shouting, it involves clapping. It involves dancing and leaping. So when the time comes for us to praise, okay, don't stand like one, oh, one, I mean, number one. Don't stand like six o'clock. And don't be an inspector and you are watching the way this person is dancing, the way the other person is dancing. That person will share his testimony. You will still be there. Violent praise. That's high praise. It clears the way. It clears the way. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 20 were told there when the people shouted after the priest blew the trumpet, the Bible said that great wall, the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city and every man straight before him and they took the city. As you praise him this morning, you too will take your miracle. Yeah. That business, I mean, that business breakthrough, you will take it today. Yeah. That miracle child you have been expecting, you will take that miracle today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. 
And I stand here to decree that the source of your worries, the source of your anxiety, the source of your sleepless night, the reason for your rejection and frustration in life, they will fall down flat before you today. As I begin to round up Psalm 149 verse 5 to 7. He said, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud unto the, on, upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to do what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. So if there is anything that I vow that this one, you will not get it. True by praise today, judgment shall come upon them. When we praise God, come, God comes down and all obstacles, they melt like wax. So that mountain is melting before you today. Isaiah 64 verse 1, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the mountains, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. Suddenly, you will look for that issue and you will not find it again. Moses said, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. Is somebody ready to praise God? Rise to your feet. Lift up your voice unto God. Give thanks unto him. Magnify him. Celebrate him this morning. Magnify him. Is that the best you can do? Lift up your voice and give him glory. Give him glory. God is about to turn that mountain into rubble for you. He's about to, he's about to, 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 to dematerialize that challenge. Lift up your voice and acknowledge him. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Thank him. Thank him. Because he's your God. He's on your side. He's for you. Give him praise. Give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before we go into the praise, you are here under the sound of my voice, and you are not yet born again. Hear me? It doesn't matter how hard you dance. It doesn't matter what you say to the mountain. The mountain will laugh at you. Why? The authority to eject it, you don't have yet. It is in Christ that, that that authority is given unto you. And so if you want that situation to turn, and let me tell you, God can do just any wonderful thing in this service. So don't postpone your salvation till next week. Today, while you hear the voice of God, make up your mind. Make up your mind. You are here under the sound of my voice. You want to give your life to Jesus or you want to, you're backsliding from the faith and you want to rededicate your life unto Jesus. Don't be like Jonah who went against God and God himself is the one that sent mountain to stop it. You can't do anything against God though. If God is not for you, everything will be against you. Therefore, all eyes closed, all eyes bowed. You want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life, please, I'd like you to put your right hand on your chest and say with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Wash me clean today by your blood. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for forgiving me my sins. Thank you for renewing my life. I believe today that you are my Lord and my Savior. And from this moment forward, I will serve you. I will follow you. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, please, can you come forward? Can you come forward? Can you come forward?